Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, is a technique for enhancing large language models by providing extra data to help them answer questions. In this video, we're going to learn how to use this technique to answer questions about the Wimbledon 2023 tennis tournament using OpenAI and the Chroma DB Vector database. Let's open up a Jupyter Notebook. We're going to start by downloading the Wimbledon 2023 Wikipedia page using Langchain, a framework for developing applications powered by large language models. So let's start by importing some modules from there. So we're going to get the Wikipedia uh, loader, and we're also going to get the recursive character text splitter. So we'll use that in a minute. We're going to use the Wikipedia loader to get the data for the Wimbledon 2023 page, which has tournament information, results, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So let's create a search term. So the search term to find this page is 2023 Wimbledon Championships. And then we'll use the Wikipedia loader. We'll pass in the search term and we're going to tell it, just get me one document. Now you can use this loader to get as many documents as you want, but we just want the one. And once we've done that, we're going to split the text up using that recursive character text splitter. We're going to go into chunks of 100 characters and we'll have a little bit of overlap. And it's basically going to kind of start from the paragraphs and sort of go down and try and break it up into, into chunks. Now, the reason to do that is because we only want to provide relevant relevant information to the LLM later on, rather than just throwing uh, everything at it. Uh, once we've done that, we can then, let's have a look at three of the, the documents, and you can see we get a document. It has uh, like a bit of the uh, the text from, uh, from the Wikipedia page, and you, there are actually a, a lot more of those. What we want to do next is actually go and store those chunks of text, and we could say that we're going to store them as embeddings in Chroma DB. And again, there are modules in Langchain that we can import, so we're going to import the one for Chroma, and we're going to import another one for the OpenAI embedding. Let's initialize the OpenAI embeddings. And next, we're going to store that Wikipedia text, those documents, in ChromaDB, which calls itself the AI Native Open Source Embedding Database. Now, in a nutshell, that means it lets you store chunks of text as arrays of numbers or, or embeddings, and then do nearest neighbor search on those embeddings to find uh, the, the most relevant uh, answer to the, the, the question that you've asked. So let's create a, a store. So we're going to go Chroma from documents and we'll pass in those, those documents that we created and we're going to pass in the OpenAI embedding uh, model as well. Uh, and then we'll create some IDs and a, and a collection name and we'll persist it. Now, internally, what's going to happen is Chroma is going to convert those text chunks, those chunks of those documents into vectors of numbers uh, using the OpenAI embeddings model. So that's all hidden from us and then it gives us back the, uh, the store. Now let's have a look at what sort of questions uh, we can uh, ask. So again, we're going to just import some modules uh, from Langchain, and we're going to create what we need to do next is we need to create a template, uh, and then we're going to so we're going to cre create a template. So we'll tell it, hey, you're the Wimbledon 2023, 2023 bot, and we'll also tell it if you don't know the answer, if the answer to the question is not there, don't don't try and make it up. And then there are some uh, built-in parameters. So we've got context uh, and we've got questions. So context is basically where it's going to put in the the, the data that it, that it uh, extracts, the extra data that it's giving uh, to the model, and then the question will be whatever question we answer, and then we'll create our prompt template. Let's initialize the uh, OpenAI model. Uh, we'll give it a temperature of zero, which kind of means uh, it shouldn't, uh, it should be, you should get reasonably nearly the same answer each time you use it rather than having variability. And we'll use GPT-4, but I mean, we could try one of the others as well. Next, we're going to create a question and answer uh, model in Langchain. Uh, and we're going to say, we're going to pass in the LLM. Uh, we're going to pass in, we need to make sure we pass in the, the, the Chroma uh, database as a retriever. So that it tells it, hey, this is what you're going to use to, to look up the relevant documents. And then the extra cool thing that you can do with this is you can say, I want you to return the source document. So when you get the answer, you can have a look. What documents did you use uh, to, to answer the question? Right, now that we've done that, let's uh, use that QA with source to ask a question. So we'll start with something that was at the top of the page. So where and when was Wimbledon 2023 held? And we'll give that a few seconds. So take, each of these takes three to four seconds or a bit longer. And you can see it comes back and it says Wimbledon 2023 was held at the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club in Wimbledon uh, from the 3rd to the 16th of July 2023. So that's a good start. How about we ask it who won the men's singles title and what was the score? So we can ask that, give it a few seconds. It says Carlos Alcaraz won the title and then if you, uh, and it gives you the score as well. And if you look underneath, it actually has picked out the, the correct part of the Wikipedia page. And it, I, I expect if we'd asked it, who did, who did Carlos Alcaraz beat, it would be able to tell us Novak Djokovic. And you can see that that information is there as well. How about another one? So in 2022, Wimbledon uh, sort of stood on its own for banning Russian and Belarusian uh, tennis players because of the, uh, the war in Ukraine. Um, and... 
So this year they actually allowed them back. So let's see if it can pick that up. So I'll ask it, were Russian players allowed to play? And you can see it says it doesn't know. It says the context provided uh, doesn't, uh, does not specify whether Russian players were allowed to play. But weirdly, if you look just underneath that, it does have the, the, the chunk that says that they are allowed to play. So I thought, okay, let's, let's try asking it in a, different, in a different way. So did Russian players play? And this time it says, yes, we, we saw the return of Russian and Belarusian tennis players. I'm not entirely sure why that is. That's kind of, kind of a bit, bit quirky, but if anybody knows, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Why, why would we get a different answer asking the question in a slightly different way i thought let's ask about british players it doesn't actually have anything any information about british players in there and that's exactly uh, what it tells us i suppose you would want it to say like actually if i don't have any information about them i can probably assume that they are allowed to play but maybe we would need to add more uh, context uh, or more information to our prompt uh, so it could do that uh, one more question so were there any extra events held uh, and so yeah and it identifies yes there was there was a special event uh, where uh, Roger Federer was honoured uh, if you liked this video you might like this other one as well showing how to run a hugging face large language model on your own machine